Hey guys, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Natasha and I'm a senior nursing student and this video is just part of um, a short series of videos on a couple of the concepts that I felt were particularly confusing um, from my nursing lecture courses and when I was trying to teach this stuff to myself in preparation for exams, I couldn't find a whole lot of um, material that helped me personally um, to learn these concepts. So, so I'm doing this video and hopefully it helps you on your tests. And this video is on hypothyroidism versus hyperthyroidism. And we are going to try to use the butterfly life cycle to work through it. All right, so let's get started with the basics. Um, starting off our life cycle, we're going to start with our egg, of course. And our egg is going to represent our hypothalamus. And this hypothalamus is responsible for the release of thyrotropin releasing hormone. And we are going to call that TRH for the purposes of this diagram. And that TRH is what stimulates our anterior pituitary gland, which is going to be beautifully represented by our caterpillar here. So again, this caterpillar is our anterior pituitary gland. There we go. And our anterior pituitary gland is going to release our thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH. And just like the name suggests, our thyroid stimulating hormone is what stimulates our thyroid. And that is going to be represented by our butterfly. So the thyroid butterfly here, that's our thyroid. And just like any living thing, our thyroid butterfly is going to produce feces. And these feces represent our T3 and T4. So there we go. We've got our basics down. And now let's move on to hypothyroidism. So just to quickly preface our discussion on hypothyroidism, let's just think about what hypothyroidism actually is. So it's an insufficient amount of our thyroid hormone, our T3 and our T4. And if you look at the bottom of our diagram here, it's um, the feces from the butterfly, just as a reminder. So think really, really basically, um, what would cause the butterfly to not have enough waste, not have enough feces? I mean, it requires intake, right? You have, to, you have to eat something in order to have waste. So if the butterfly is not eating enough, then he's not going to have enough waste. Um, so that brings me to my very first um, and most common cause of hypothyroidism is not enough intake, specifically of iodine, which is required for the production of T3 and T4. Iodine deficiencies are often combated by additives like our table salt, but definitely not always and not everywhere in the world. Again, it's the number one cause of hypothyroidism currently. So we're going to represent that by this tiny, tiny little drop of nectar. Um, just the butterfly is not taking in enough nectar, and um, that translates to us not taking in enough iodine. And I apologize because I really should have put more feces on my original diagram. It makes it a little bit confusing when I'm trying to erase T3 and T4 and illustrate that um, the hypothyroidism has occurred. But anyway, you get the idea. So the next cause is Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And Hashimoto's thyroiditis is an autoimmune condition in which the body is attacking the thyroid. Um, and so I remember this because Hashimoto's kind of sounds like Hiroshima. So here I am drawing some bombs next to our butterfly um, that are going to attack our butterfly. And if the butterfly is being attacked, then it's not going to make enough waste because it's weak. So just remember it that way. And then one more cause of hypothyroidism that I wanted to mention that I didn't include on this diagram would be a pituitary gland tumor. So think of a tumor on the underside of this caterpillar here um, that's preventing the caterpillar from sending out enough TSH. And if there's not enough TSH, 
your thyroid is not going to be stimulated adequately. So you're not going to be producing enough T3 and T4. And then finally, as with many other conditions, if you overtreat, you can actually end up with an opposite issue. So if you overtreat hyperthyroidism, that is if you treat it too aggressively, you can suppress the thyroid so much that you end up with hypothyroidism instead. So to put this in the terms of our butterfly diagram here, if you've got a hyperthyroidism issue, as in your butterfly is producing too much T3 and T4 feces, and you overtreat this butterfly um, too aggressively, be that by surgical intervention or chemical or what have you, then um, you can end up with a hypothyroidism where your butterfly is now going to produce too little T3 and T4. So next we're going to move on to hyperthyroidism. So naturally hyperthyroidism is going to be the opposite of hypothyroidism. So we're going to have an excess of our thyroid hormone, our T3 and T4 represented by the butterfly feces. Um, so you can see I just drew that in at the bottom of our diagram here. This T3 and T4 is what regulates our metabolic rate. And if we've got too much, our metabolic rate is just going to be way too fast. We're just going to be go, go, go. With this, your thyroid is becoming exhausted because it's working so hard to produce T3 and T4. And when you work really hard, you get really exhausted, right? So I remember the phrase, you can work yourself into the grave, you can run yourself into the grave. And um, also remember, go, go, go with the G's. So run yourself into the grave and go, go, go is um, the way you can remember our number one cause for hyperthyroidism, which is Graves' disease. So Graves' disease is associated with high levels of TSI, which is thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin. And I'm putting this near the TSH to remind you that it has the same function as the TSH. It stimulates the thyroid um, to produce T3 and T4. So if you've got the thyroid being stimulated by the TSH in addition to the TSI, it's just going to be making way too much T3 and T4. Um, so interestingly enough, the body actually tries to compensate for this and limits the production of TSH to try to offset the effect of the TSI. So your lab values with Graves' disease, um, you're going to see high TSI, low TSH, and um, high T3 and T4. So the other cause of hyperthyroidism that I want to mention quickly that's pretty easy to remember is called toxic nodular goiter. And it's usually caused by um, insufficient iodine levels, so too low of iodine levels kind of a process, so I won't really go into it, but the way I remember it is because of the word toxic. And when I think toxic, I think poison. So think of food poisoning for your butterfly. It's just going to be like diarrhea of T3 and T4. You're going to have too much T3 and T4. So just remember the word toxic. And then lastly, as I mentioned before with the hypothyroidism, over-aggressive treatment for your opposite condition can be a cause. So if you over-aggressively treat your hypothyroidism, you can end up with hyperthyroidism. So you really need to keep this in mind when you're thinking about a healthy balance um, treatment plan for your patient. And the last thing I wanted to do was just give you these diagrams side by side. You'll notice I put over-aggressive treatment down at the bottom since it pertains to both of them. And this is exactly how I set it up for my tests. I just drew out this cycle side by side. Here they are zoomed in just a little bit so you can see them a little bit better, hopefully. Here's the hypo side first. So you've got your hypothalamus egg down to the TRH and the anterior pituitary gland caterpillar with the tumor added on and the TSH, and then your thyroid producing minimal T3 and T4. And then you've got your Hashimoto's over on the left, and your tiny little nectar drop representing too little iodine over on the right. Then your hyper side, so again your hypothalamus egg at the top, down to the TRH, and then the anterior pituitary gland, 
and then down to the TSH and then your thyroid butterfly producing an excess of T3 and T4. And then over on the left, you've got the Graves disease uh, with the TSI. And then down at the bottom, you can see the toxic nodular goiter.